The Savage Worlds Fantasy Skirmish Kickstarter is about a week away from funding and it's just about at the stretch goal, which is great. But I want to do a quick video just to talk about the army builder. So obviously the uh, book will be able to be used in two ways. It can either be used as uh, an, an add-on to the RPG where you play a role playing game and the GM says, right, now we are going to fight a big battle. You, you pitch the characters in. That's where you've got existing characters, you've got predefined forces and so on and so forth. But it can also be used as a standard war games rule set. And for that, you need points, you need factions, you need uh, army lists and so on. And so in the book will be six army lists, uh, dwarves, greenskins, halflings, humans, undead and elves. There will of course be rules to design your own factions and your own army lists and if the uh, stretch goal is met which it should be there will also be some additional army lists in there and so i put together the um uh, a spreadsheet to help you work out your your army so when we uh, had a really really big battle a, a few weeks ago there were um uh, six of us so all factions were represented in that and it was the four good factions against the two evil and it was 4,000 points per side and that's a really 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 big battle it's a huge battle most of the other battles we do are two players with a thousand points a side and so in this army builder we've got one tab for each of the different factions and so if we go to dwarves for example we can choose different units in our force. And so we have a drop down list. And so here you can see rune guard, spearmen, axemen, infantry, crossbowmen, clansmen, boar riders, cannon, bombardiers, uh, the general, a berserker, uh, rune master, and sorceress. And so every force has different types of units. It has a signature unit. For the dwarves, it's the rune guard. For the greenskins, it's the spider riders. Halflings have slingers. Humans have uh, foot knights. Undead have mummies. And elves have rangers. So these are like a special unit that almost epitomizes that faction. So when I put rune guard in, we've currently got novice ones, but we can change that to seasoned or to veteran. And so a novice rune guard is 26 points. So the standard for infantry is 10 models, so a unit of rune guard is 260 points. If they're novice, it's 340 if they're seasoned, and it's 420 if they are veteran. So we can also, in addition to our signature unit, we also have three basic units. So for the dwarves, they are spearmen, axemen, and infantry. Basic units are all generally infantry units. They could be skirmishers, so both the goblins and the elves have skirmishers, but they are generally your rank and file infantry units, and they're varying costs. Whereas the rune guard have four advances, four improvements per rank, so novice have four advances, uh, seasoned have another four, veteran have another four your basic units have two or three. And you also have an, uh, in, uh, a missile unit, which for the dwarves is crossbowmen, and they also have two to three advances. So you've got four standard units. So the dwarves have um, infantry, uh, sorry, have spearmen, axemen, infantry, and then the crossbowmen and the missile ones. If we look at the uh, the, the green skins um, here are basic ones, are spearmen, swordsmen, orc spearmen, orc swordsmen, goblin skirmishers, and orc archers. And the humans have um, spearmen, swordsmen, skirmish. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought I clicked on humans there. And the humans have. Spear, spearmen, swordsmen, berserkers, and longbowmen. So each of them have their own uh, different units. So we've got our signature, we've got our three basic, and we've got our missile troops. We also have a cheap unit for every faction. So the dwarves have clansmen. 
the greenskins have lesser goblin slaves, the halflings have townsfolk, the humans have militia, the undead have zombies, uh, the elves have war dogs. This is a one advanced unit. So even veteran cheap troops only have a total of three advances, which is less than a novice uh, signature. But they're designed to be cheap and they're limited in equipment <clears throat> and so on. So a unit of novice clansmen is only 13 and a unit of veteran clansmen is only 170. So that's cheaper than a unit of um, novice crossbowmen or infantry, but they're not very good. So every force also has a cavalry unit. So dwarves have boar riders. Uh, Greenskins have wolf riders. Halflings have goat riders. Humans have got knights. Undead have got death knights. And elves have got eagle riders. So again, everyone has its own cavalry unit. <clears throat> and cavalry also has four advances. We also... And I don't think that's quite worked out right. I think I've put the wrong value in for boar riders there because I know that they are... Oh, sorry, that is right, isn't it? 35. Because a unit of cavalry is only five models. That's the 175 threw me there for a second. Now, every faction also has either a large um, unit uh, or they have an artillery. So the greenskins have trolls. The elves have treemen. The dwarves have a cannon, the halflings have a rocket launcher, the humans have a catapult, and the undead have a skull launcher. And so the cannon here doesn't matter whether it's novice seasoned or veteran because the actual cannon itself is none of those. But what you then buy is four crew. So bombardiers cost 13 points each if they're novice. They can indeed be seasoned or veteran. And you need at least four, but you can have more than four. And there are, there are some benefits to having more than four. So those are the units. You've got your signature, your three different basic ones, your missile, your cheap, your cavalry, and either your artillery or your large. Then every force also has four different wildcard types. So you've got a general. Your general has leadership edges. So your general has um, uh, command and so on. They tend to have good spirit and they tend to be there to direct troops rather than be an outright hero. Although they can, of course, fight on their own and they're pretty good at that still. So we've got a general type, again, that can be novice, seasoned or veteran. The dwarves then have a berserker as their hero type. The greenskins have a um, crack archer, the elves have a march warden, the uh, humans uh, have a two-handed swordsman, and, and so on. So there is a hero type for every force as well. And these are intended to be one-to-one -one combatants that are very dangerous. Every faction also has a magical type. So we seem to be missing one. Oh, no, there we go. Rune Master is the magical type for the dwarves. And the Rune Master for the Dwarves have spells that boost and buff others, while he's also a decent uh, fighter. The Greenskins have uh, a Warlock, and the Halflings have a Battle Priest, and so on. Now, every faction also has a fourth wildcard type. So the Dwarves actually have a Sorceress. Uh, the Elves have a Paladin. Uh, the undead have a lich lord and so on. So the fourth type in a faction may be magical, could be a general type, a different general type, could be a fighting type, could be a mix of all of them. It's, it's up to you. But there are the three defined ones and then one that will vary by force. And as you can see, at the moment, if we have a novice rune guard, a novice inf inf infantry, a novice uh, crossbowman, veteran clansmen, novice boar riders, Novice Cannon, four Bombardiers, a Novice General Berserker and Rune Master and Sorceress. That still comes to 14, 47 points. So still quite a lot more than our um, thousand point limit for a, a small battle. Now you can also add standards and musicians to units at a, point, at a cost of 10 points each. 
and there are limits on, on how many you can add. And standards improve morale and they can prevent routing. They do come with a slight risk. They benefit the unit they're in and they benefit adjacent units. But if you manage to route a standard bearing unit, it can affect the other units around it. And musicians just help them move faster. And there is a bit of a balancing mechanic here because dwarves, for example, pretty much all have chainmail and shields and good weapons and so on. Many of the greenskins, however, don't. Now, the difference there is, is in the magic items that are available. So the dwarves only have one magic item available, which is runic armor at 21 points. You can add that to a wild card and it has various uh, benefits for that wild card. Whereas the greenskins, they have worse equipment and they have an axe of slaughter and a bone fetish and an anointed shield and a plate cutter weapon and black armor so they have various different other magic items to choose from the dwarves have a set of runic armor that's it that's their magic item whereas the greenskins have a whole load because the the armor and weapons on their units is not as good now of course that also means that the greenskins are cheaper per unit so dwarves per unit are more expensive but that balancing mechanism is in the items you can have so again halflings don't tend to have a huge uh, equipment list per unit but you've got three very very good magic items there and so that balances it out and makes them um, better so if we put the runic armor on we're up to four, 1488 points and so we can use this to build our different forces um, and prep for an individual battle and of course it's easy enough to save different copies of this spreadsheet um, you can see here that the um, the white mounted on a pteranodon is very very expensive but is very 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 good so you can see there it's 841 for novice mummies novice skeleton archers novice zombies and a veteran white we're not far off um, maximum there so we could then put another unit of zombies in maybe there you go 921 magic item standard and or, or musician and, and off we go so this little tool just helps you build your your force now hopefully that's useful i will be putting out a couple more videos before the kickstarter ends and hopefully that's useful